what have you been doing with this clock? There's all sorts in here. It's not meant to be a receptacle for miscellaneous bric-a-brac. No wonder it's not keeping time. Are you expecting anyone? Ask a stupid question. Come in! It's not locked! Come in! Oh, must be deaf. Oh, don't stir yourself, I'll get it. Come in now. You'll have to excuse the mess. I'll just deliver this and be off. I won't take up much of your time. Time? That's the one thing I'm not short of. Not since, well, you don't want to hear my life story. Not unless you need a good laugh or a reason to slash your wrists. Now, sit yourself down. Oh, sorry about the mess. You ought to see my place. I come to do for him every week, but it doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference. Trying to keep this place clean is like painting the Sistine Chapel. It's never-ending. That's the fourth bridge, isn't it, that's never-ending? Is it so? I was never any good at geography. Do you want a cup of tea? No, thanks. I'll just deliver this and I'll be on my way. Oh, sit yourself down. He'll be glad to see you. He doesn't get many visitors these days. He doesn't get any, in fact. People seem to have abandoned him. I'm not really a visitor as such. Like I say, I'm here on a sort of errand, really. Just dropping this suitcase off. Well, you're here, and that's the main thing. Sit yourself down. Are you sure you don't want a cup of tea? I'm fine, thanks. Is he about, Mr... Uh, uh... The old fella, about. <laughs> that's a good one. Well, he is and he isn't, if you get my meaning. That's him in the corner there, covered in ex-army blankets and sleeping like a newborn baby. Oh, that's him, is it? What were you expecting? He's an old man now. Did you think he'd be tap dancing on the table or playing the piano accordion like in the old days? I don't really know. I, I just got my instructions, give him the suitcase and collect my pay. They were grand old days though, and no mistake. We won't see their like again. Sit down and take the weight off. You look like you're fit to drop. I am a bit tired. It's quite a walk all the way across town. Plus, I didn't sleep very well last night. There was this dog barking down the street. Oh, I have nights like that. Woof, 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 all flipping night. <sighs> With me, it's the legs. I've got these legs that won't relax. If I'd had a gun, I swear I'd have gone out and shot it. Bang, one shot, that's all it would take. Restless legs, the doctor calls them. Always moving and twitching when I'm lying in the bed. Will you sit down? Thanks, huh? I'll just take the weight off for a minute. I've come all the way across town and I'm not used to walking. We used to be on a bus route, number 11. But they stopped that donkeys years ago. The bus stop's still there, but no bus ever comes near it. Well, sit down if you're going to. Oh, yeah, sorry. Well, Are you all right? Um, fine, thanks. It's just that normally I wouldn't touch a suitcase with a barge pole. Is that right? Excuse me while I get on with this. Here, hold this spring wheel for me and keep an eye on that tiny screw. I mustn't drop that. It will be bloody impossible to find it among the muck on this floor. Is it your profession then, clock mending? No, I sometimes wish it were. Nothing gives me greater pleasure in life than having a rummage among the workings of a clock. Unless it's a cuckoo clock. I hate to see cruelty to birds. You were saying about suitcases? Oh yes, I've had some very bad experiences with suitcases. I know what you mean. I've lost my share of luggage before now. It's not losing suitcases I'm talking about. It's acquiring them. How do you mean? Let's just say I haven't touched a suitcase since I took up ventriloquism. Oh, it's a ventriloquist you are. Not anymore. I had to give it up. I've always admired ventriloquists. Very clever fellows they are, throwing the voice and all. It's an art, throwing your voice. I've always said that. Ah, but did you say it without moving your lips? Pardon? Nothing. Uh, just a little ventriloquist joke. Oh, I see. Uh, what made you give it up? Dummy trouble. Dummy trouble? Dummy trouble. I acquired what I thought was a bargain at a car boot sale in Basingstoke. I'm a great one for a bargain. The man assured me it was a fully working ventriloquist dummy, complete with swivelling eyes and self-raising eyebrows. Came in a suitcase, just like this one, only about twice as big. Genuine yak skin it was. 
Sounds like a real bargain for a ventriloquist like yourself. Except for one thing. When I got home, I discovered it wasn't a ventriloquist dummy inside. What was it? It was a dead midget. A dead midget? Lord above, you must have been in a state of shock. It did shake me up, I can tell you. I didn't realise until I started messing about at the back, looking for the controls to make the mouth work. Dear, oh dear, a dead midget. You'd be needing counselling after a shock like that. What did you do with it? Oh, I took it straight back. But the bloke who sold it to me was long gone. No sign of him or his car boot. You should have gone to the police. I would have done, but then I thought, what if they think I murdered the midget? Well, why should they think that? My face. I've always had a very guilty face. They could have took one look at me and jumped to the wrong conclusion. Next thing I know, I'll be sent for psychiatric reports and end up at the Old Bailey. You could do a lot worse. It's no come on a garden courtroom, the Old Bailey. It's the equivalent to appearing at the London Palladium. Well, that was my ambition, to appear at the Palladium. Not top of the bill, sort of halfway down. Colin Guest, the people's ventriloquist. The bloody midget put an end to that little dream. So what did you do with it? Well, only thing I could do, I sold it to a man I met in a pub outside Lowestoft. I haven't touched a suitcase since, until now, that is. Look on the bright side. This suitcase is far too small to have a midget inside. Oh, I certainly hope so. What you need is a nice cup of tea. What I really need is to give this to the old man and be on my way. Do you think he'll wake up soon? Who can tell? I've known him sleep for days without so much as stirring. I can't hang around here for days. I've got things to do, places to go, people to meet. You sound like a very busy man. It's good to be busy. The devil makes work for idle hands, as my dad used to say. Maybe I should come back. When he's awake. And how will you know when that is? He's as unpredictable as the wind. You might as well hang on. He could be up in about in another five minutes. Don't you think so? Then again, he might be dead to the world for the next three days. Do you take sugar in your tea? Three, please. Three? I've got this sweet tooth. How did you get involved with this particular suitcase? Pure chance. A man came up to me and asked me to deliver it just came up to you out of the blue and what's in it well, i don't know what you're carrying a suitcase around and you don't know what's in it are you mad or what well, it's not very heavy the heaviness of the thing is neither here nor there there could be anything in it where were you given this suitcase at the railway station i'll bet that's a fine place for suitcases and strange comings and goings no it was outside the el dorado snooker hall in canal street i thought they'd knock that place down Demolished it to make way for something else. My old dad used to say that place was a den of iniquity. Keen on the old snooker, are you? I dabble. I'm not a hustler or anything. Sign of a misspent youth, my old dad used to say. And he should know. He was a hustler himself, an area champion five years in a row. I've never seen the attraction myself. Snooker's OK. It passes the time. I only went there today on doctor's orders. Your doctor told you to go and play snooker? Uh, not in so many words. He told me to get out more. Meet people. He thinks I'm turning into a hermit. A hermit? They're crabs, aren't they? I told him straight, I'm not a hermit. I'm a recluse. <laughs> he didn't listen. Just gave me a prescription for some more tablets. I told him straight, look here, doc. I don't need pills, doc. I need a job. Can you write me a prescription for that, doc? Can you? Do you know what he said? What did he say? Don't call me Doc. Bloody typical. Don't call me Doc. Doctors. They're only interested in your health. There's none of them worth the paper they write their so-called prescriptions on. I wouldn't mind, but I used to have a really good job. I was a forklift truck driver down the cat food factory, till they knocked it down. Oh, I remember that place. It used to give off some powerful smells. Well, that's why they closed it down in the end. The stench got too much. Never bothered me. Gave off some truly terrible smells, that place. It was always in the local paper about the stink. Never bothered me. I think my nostrils must be on the blink. You ought to see a doctor about that. Yeah, I'll pop down the surgery tomorrow. No sign of him stirring. He's a very sound sleeper. You don't think he's... What? Well, sleeping the big sleep. All his sleeps are big ones. He'll be awake in a minute and demanding his porridge. So, you've got a suitcase and you've no idea what's in it. Bring that here and let me take a look. Oh, it's small for its size and it's seen better days. Scuff marks galore on it. Let me feel the weight of it. It's not light, 
mind you it's not too heavy either it's not ticking that's one thing steady don't go breaking anything there's plenty of stuff rattling around in there have you opened it up and looked inside of course i haven't just delivering it besides it's locked i was told to give it to the old man to put it in his hands and nobody else's for his eyes only eh I don't need to open this to know exactly what'll be inside it. Relics. Relics? What sort of relics? Oh, a tooth from the jawbone of the whale that ate Jonah. God's holy spanner that he used to make this world and the next. Pontius Pilate's false teeth, they'll be in there as well. Of course, I could leave it with you, if you're a relative and you could me? pay me. A relative of his, that's a good one. What relative of his would I be? I don't know, his daughter maybe. His daughter? That's rich. Mind you, he has been like a father to me, all except in one respect. So, what was he like? Who? The man who gave you the suitcase. How old would you say he was? Well, I don't know, I'm not very good at guessing ages. If I tried to guess your age now, I'd probably be a good dozen or more years out. You'd be offended. Quite right too. Was he young or old? Was he bald or just going thin on top? Did he have grey hair or hide his thatch under a poacher's cap? Well, I don't... Was he well-to-do, a snappy dresser? Or did he look down on his look as if he'd seen better days? To be honest, I wasn't looking that closely. Attention to detail is a virtue. That's what I always say. It's essential if you're ever called on to assist the boys in blue. He was very short. I remember thinking, he's a very short man. He'd only come up to here on a shrub. A shrub? He'd only come up to here on your average shrub. I, I remember thinking that when he limped over like. Oh, he limped, did he? Oh, he limped all right. Oh, yes, definitely had a limp. Short man with a limp. Which leg was he limping with? Both. He had a limp in both legs. That's very unusual. What colour were his eyes? I couldn't see his eyes. They were hidden by the brim of his hat. It was pulled very low over his face. Now we're getting somewhere. What sort of hat was it? It was one of those outdoor hats. You mean a fedora? No. A trilby? No. It was the kind of hat they wear in the great outdoors. Oh, I know the sort. A bushwhacker's hat. How much did this mystery man say the old fellow would give you? Well, he didn't. He just said I'd, I'd be well rewarded. But I expect uh, it's in the region of £30. £30? Pounds? Where's the old man to get £30 from? That's what I'd like to know. He didn't give the last one £30. He gave him something, but it wasn't £30. What do you mean, the, the last one? The last one that brought him a suitcase. You mean there have been others on the same errand? Oh, yes. All much like you. Expecting payment for their efforts. They were rewarded all right. Well, how many suitcases have been delivered then? Oh, I've lost count. Getting on for a baker's dozen, I'd say. If I was to look under the old man's bed, I could give you a more accurate figure. Under the bed? That's where he keeps them. The other suitcases, they're under the bed? All lying there, unopened. Each like that one, with a little label attached. Oh, this label says number seven. Well, that'll be it then. There'll be six others under the bed. Go and look for yourself. You want me to go under the bed and count how many suitcases are there? I'd do it, but I've got these knees. Go on. I can see you're a man for a challenge. After all, didn't you bring the suitcase here on an errand for a complete stranger? I was told I'd be rewarded. There's no reward in clambering under that bed. Aren't you a little bit curious about the suitcases? A little. You know, you have the air of an adventurer about you. Not really. Yes, you do. You're a pioneer if ever I saw one. The type who goes off and discovers new lands. Do, do you think so? Oh, yes. I bet Bravado is your middle name. Well, it's Stanley, actually. Stanley. A brave name, that. As befits a man who wouldn't flinch if a lady asked him to go and count how many suitcases there are under a bed. Well, if I was asked... I'm asking you. I'd do it myself if it wasn't for the knees. Oh, please, I'd be very grateful. I won't be able to rest until I know the exact number. Well, if you put it like that... Off you go, then. Better take this one with you to compare and contrast. Here I go, then. And if you're not back by sundown, we'll send out a search party. <laughs> what can you see? Not much. It's very dark under here and very dusty. Ugh. I'll be to blame for that. It's the knees. They've put paid to a lot of underbed housework duties. 
Can you see the suitcases yet? No. Keep going. There'll be a pile of little suitcases just like the one you brought. I can't see anything. Just keep going. Hold on. I can see a light in the distance. That's the ticket. Just head towards the light. It's a long way off. It's like I'm in a tunnel. It's very strange. Just keep going. It goes on for bloody miles. They can't be far now. You just keep going. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? I think he must have taken a wrong turning. Hello? Who's there? Uh, sorry, your door was open. I did knock. Are you the police? Oh, good Lord, no. I've come here on an errand. An errand? What sort of errand? I bumped into this man down by the canal and he asked me to deliver this suitcase. Number eight. What? Nothing. You'd better come in. Would you like a cup of tea?